What's up guys, it's Snakes and their mates again. And today is another Herc Files. We're showing you one of South Africa's most uh, common and most well-known venomous snakes. The Puff Adder, the Puff Adder, the Puffy Adder, the British Oritans. I can't think of any more names. Um, but this one, this is a very, very cool snake and a very common snake where we are, Grahamstown. So what do we know about these snakes? What is the common info about these guys? Yeah, so these are yeah, very common snakes across South Africa. They're found pretty much everywhere except for what, forests and... Yeah, forests and true deserts. True deserts, yeah. yeah. Um, they exhibit some sexual dimorphism. This one's got a really short little tail. And, and this uh, guy... Chad's male's got pretty a long tail. Long tail, yeah. And I mean, snakes are sort of like heads with tails. So what we consider as a tail <laughs> is uh, from the cloaca to the tip. And the cloaca is a hole yeah. that... Uh, what do they do with that hole? Makes poo and weave. That's and where babies. It comes. And babies as yeah, well. Yeah, because puff adders give live birth. That's one of the other cool things about them. Yeah, they, they don't give ready to eggs. That's that's too mainstream for these guys. These guys are viviparous, meaning that they give birth to live young. It's quite gross, but they dig it. Puff adders exhibit color differentiation based on locality. What I was basically trying to say there in very scientific terms is that they're different colors in different places. The ones in Grahamstown are nice and yellow, beautiful like this. And in Joburg, they're actually very drab and boring. But enough with the facts, let's listen to the, the myths about these guys. Yeah, so a lot of guys are always like, uh, yeah, puff adders can strike backwards. Um, basically, that's just cuck. They, uh, they just strike so fast that uh, you don't see it coming, really. But uh, generally, if you've got a pissed off puff adder, it sort of has this big S shape, puts it, takes its head off the ground, and it'll kiss. It gives you a pretty good warning that you're in trouble and you're too close to its, to its body. Uh, but generally, about the, the length of the animal, if you're further than that, away from it, away from its head, you're generally pretty safe. Juveniles can be an exception because often when they strike, they throw their whole body off the ground. And you really have to watch out for those little buggers. And uh, the way we're holding them here, you can see with these tubes, uh, it's just one of the safer ways of handling them because when you neck them, you just got you increase your chances of getting bitten with those really big fangs. We've got a, a DOR puff out of here, dead on road, that we found the other night. Um, and I just thought it'd be a good opportunity to show you some of the fangs that these guys have because uh, I won't do this with a live animal. But if you check here in these sheets, there, you can check the size of these fangs. Um, that these guys have. In fact, on the right, it looks like there's even two fangs. They often have uh, these like double sets where they'll have a couple of fangs uh, just like spare in case they, they snap some off. Um, often when they're biting rodents or something, it's a very violent strike and they'll snap one off. So they often they'll have two or three fangs. Um, but that's, I mean, yeah, those are decent sized fangs. So when that thing hits you, it's going to be injecting a large amount of venom because it's a big snake and it's going to inject it quite deep into you. And uh, as Chad mentioned just now, it's that cytotoxic venom which is cell destroying. Um, and it's just, it's, it's quite a nasty venom to get in you. So if you check here, I've just slid the sheath back a bit um, and you can see the fang and you can actually see there's a bit of venom coming out there. Uh, obviously my, my fingers are squeezing the venom glands. Um, and I basically, I, I don't see that there's ever a need to neck a puff adder. It's very risky, it's very dangerous. You can see the size of these fangs. Um, and then also if you have a look here, there's just a lot of skin. So you're gonna grab this thing and it, it's gonna twist in your hands or whatever and a lot of guys have been bitten by necking puff adders, it's just, it's not a good idea. You can neck dead things if you if you really must, for educational purposes, but it's just, it's never worth it necking a live puff adder. Um, if you're a hiker and you've hiked quite a lot, some scientists actually believe that you actually may have stepped on one in your life and he actually never bit you. So that's quite a crazy thing to come across because you don't want to think that you stepped on a puff adder, but quite a lot of people have actually stepped on them and never been bitten. Because if these guys bit everyone that stepped on them, they'd have no more venom and there'll be no more people left because <laughs> they're everywhere. One thing we wanted to say today is that a lot of our videos are very, very scientific. So, um, this snake, in our opinion, is a testament to what you can learn about science if you look just a little bit closer. So, puff adders, everyone knows, they're all over the place. They're one of the coolest snakes, they're colorful, everyone knows them. So, because you see them everywhere, you assume everyone knows everything there is to know about them. But, some clever researchers, particularly at Vitz lately, have found some awesome facts about this snake, which is actually found everywhere, that knew, no one actually knew before. What was that again? Yeah, um, yeah, the one guy was, was watching uh, CCTV footage of them and uh, he worked out they were using this tongue luring to actually attract especially uh, frogs, toads yeah. and stuff like that. Um, and they just flicked their tongue as soon as they saw a toad and the toad would hop in close and they'd nail them. Yeah, and the puff adders actually were shown to be actually a bit smarter than originally thought because they only actually used the tongue luring with frogs, with amphibians. They didn't use yeah. it with other species. And they also showed that puff adders are among some of the very few reptiles or actually animals in the whole world to utilize both tail and tongue luring. So uh, whilst we were taking pictures here of one of our puff adders, they actually cruised across here and just came into this bush. And we thought it'd be a quite nice opportunity to just show you guys how well camouflaged they are. I mean, you look in this bush and you can't see it, but there's an 80 centimeter puff adder just hiding in here. So if you just have a look in here, through the branches, 
just coming down here. Actually, there's our little male puff adder just chilling out at the bottom there. And uh, they'll do this, they have this very cryptic patterning, and they'll come and they'll lie at the base of bushes and in grass and stuff. Um, and apparently for up to a couple of weeks, they'll just lie in the same spot. The cool thing about them is uh, they're often scentless. Yeah. Um, and, and that's because when these guys get into sort of ambush mode, they can sit for like a couple of weeks in the leaf litter, just in one spot. They get some leaves falling on top of them, helps with their camouflage. And if you sit in one spot for three weeks and you, you're smelling it up, everything's going to smell you as it comes past. So by not having any scent, they can just sit there a couple of weeks, no one can smell them, no one can see them, and they can just grab anything that walks past, which is really cool. Yeah, so they both cryptically camouflage in terms of their color and their smell, because the study which Luke was actually referring to, they use meerkats, which have phenomenal noses, and dogs, which have phenomenal noses, as you know, and they weren't able to smell them out. But when they put a brown house snake in the equation, they were able to smell them out. And that's because brown house snakes are terrestrial snakes that actively hunt their prey. And these guys have to sit in one place. So they can't afford to be given away by their smell, their looks, or anything else. These guys are fantastic snakes, and they are very common to us because we often do call outs to remove these guys because they seem to be everywhere in Grahamstown and quite, quite, quite abundant in Eastern Cape. Cool. Thanks for watching our videos. And if you like what we got, and you don't think we complete tonsils, please subscribe to watch more videos. to live young and in some cases exorbitant amounts of live young in Kenya what was the record it was out of a yeah, Kenyan zoo 90 yards or something it yes was it, like was, it was it don't, was ridiculous don't don't it was it was a number between 100 and 200 and it was it was a ridiculous number and that's because these guys really slutty